to meeting, share screen, share desktop. Okay, here we go. So uh, this tool is an ETL module that we have been using uh, for population management project at, 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 uh, at MGB. Uh, so we realized that it's very difficult for you know new developers and new users to get through the learning curve of I2B2 and understand the internal structure of I2B2 to load data. Right. So first is installing I2B2 is a hurdle. And second thing, getting data into I2B2 is a hurdle. Now to install I2B2, we have the Docker, we have Dockerized it, and you have seen the, you know, the Docker, uh, you know, Docker containers scripts. And I'll post the links for that in case you have not. But in this, in this, in this demo, uh, I would want to do a hands-on session maybe for five minutes. So we've got 60 workspaces set up. And you will be in this five minutes, be able to, in your workspace, load I2B2 data into an I2B2 instance. And uh, so how to make it very simple? And that has been our focus of this work for the almost past year or two. We plan to release this in open source, uh, uh, I know at least you know, in, in, the next, in the next cup, next week or two, we want beta testers. So here is how it is, here is how it is organized. So how, here's how the module works. So all you need to do is organize your data into two files, uh, actually data into one file, it's called a fact file and your, met, your ontology lives in this metadata file. And here is how they would look. So these are, these are concept, uh, you know, these are, uh, uh, okay, so this is how, how, how it looks. So your concept file, you just need three things to build an I2B2 ontology, the path, the code, and a type. And you put, a, put that in the concept.csv file, and you load that file into this I2B2 web client, which has got this ETL module, and you choose that file and when you load it, you'll have the ontology created. That's the concept file. And once you have the ontology, you can load a fact, fact file. And the fact, you just need four things. You need the medical record number, the date and timestamp, the code, and a value. You don't have to worry about all those fields, whether it's a number and have all those combinations. You just need these four values. And you upload this file, the ETL tool in the back end will validate that your data is in fact, according to, uh, you know, it is of the right type. It matches the type, it will do that validation. It will make sure that those concepts are in fact there, whatever you are uploading. It'll give you some feedback, it'll give you an error analysis and it'll load those facts. And you could, the ETL tool is more like, you know, the web client tool is more like when you are developing it. But once you have it developed, You could put it in a GitLab repo, and this and this module will kick off GitLab runners, which will run. So, so you you need to have a SQL, right? So, for example, let's say you've got demographics in a source database, and you you need to put SQL to create those fact files from the database. And what will happen is the GitLab runner will automatically you can schedule this to run every day, and this is how it works right now. It kicks off a nightly job, or or you know even hourly job, and it will pull data, it'll execute the SQL, and the output of the SQL is this format, the CSV, which I explained, the four column format. You, it, it automatically will extract that, dump that file, it'll upload that to the database. It'll give you error logs and you know it'll warn you if there's some something has gone wrong and, and so on, but it's an automation thing. So, so you see what happens then, setting up an I2B2 instance boils down to the simple task of writing the SQL, which has got these four columns, uh, uh, writing a SQL which generates an output with these four columns. Uh, so let's have a quick demo of this. Uh, I'm going to put, uh, I've got 60 workspaces set up. I'm going to put this link in, in, uh, in Zoom right now. You could go on to this. Put a chat. Just trying to find chat where it is. Click on this link, and this link will take you to this page where I want you to select. I just want you to enter your email here, and when you enter your email, 
you will see a URL, URL being generated here for you. And you can click on that URL and it will take you to an I2B2 instance. And the username and password that you have selected, so you can remember your username, you can, you know, and, and the password, and you can enter that into your I2B2, uh, you know, pop up. This shows that everybody has got their own database and project. So this tutorial, which you are doing is actually what we did in November and okay, I'll, I'll, I'll walk you through that. So you're there now and you can put in your username, whatever is user, you know, you've got for my, for example, I've got user one and this is my password. So I'll copy my password. I'll go to the web client user one, paste the password and there you're in. And you'll notice that okay, that there is this ontology here and I've got an ETL tab, you know, and you have this ETL tab because you have been made as a power user. Uh, you are able to now upload data into I2B2 using this ETL tab. And you can, if you hit delete, it is going to delete the data in I2B2. Uh, so this is your project database, uh, you know, and each one of you has got a project database. And now, how do you upload the data, right? So, uh, so this is the scheme, right? Uh, which I described, let me get back to this slide. So I've got these sample files up here uh, for you. And you can download them from, I should post this link again and Okay, you can go to the community wiki and go to, maybe I should just put the link for the file rather than asking you to do that. So here is a link for the file, the concept file, and here is a fact file. So you can download those files, you can open them and you could go to your, web client, you can choose, for example, choose file. So I've got that file downloaded. And for example, so I have got the concept file here. So you upload it and you will see that this is the sample concept file. You've got your ontology generated over here. And okay, let me upload some sample facts, the example facts, which I created. And the facts go in and you'll get a log of how many, you know, you just have these like for you to play around with right now. And we are actually doing this with in, in production with hundreds of concepts and thousands and millions of facts that this is happening with. So uh, yeah, for example, okay, you can go to the query tool and you just create the sample file just as two patients. So you'll get that number you know, and your labs. So your blood glucose, you know, you, because you specified the the type, the XMLs are automatically generated. And you know, that uh, the tool take, tooling takes care, the pipeline takes care of generating those XMLs and all those internal I2, t I2 e tables for you. So all you really need to do is have, if you already have concepts coming from a common site, that ontology will be there. You just need to produce this fact file. Okay, so I want to see if others are able to do this. And in and obviously you have some, uh, at the community wiki, you have a video tutorial for this tool and you can watch these videos, their YouTube videos about how this, uh, how this can be done. Okay, and I know we don't have enough time. Maybe we could have some another session some other time, uh, but I would love to have your feedback, you know, and your participation, especially for beta testing and even suggestion for development. So one, one suggestion which I've got from people is to, is, is this to take out this delete button. It's very scary to delete something from I2B2. 
so uh, the suggestion here is that is to undo the last step so we'll be able to you'll be able to undo the last step and that's what uh, that's what this button will change to so delete button will go away um yeah and if you're interested in beta testing uh, i think better thing is just to send me an email uh, and i'll be happy to send this docker these this thing to you uh, if these are a docker containers which you can run in your own environment and i can send this to you you know next week so let me stop here and ask open it up for questions there's a question uh, from mahesh I'm going to unmute you. Oop. I guess you unraised his hand. Okay. No. Any other questions? You can raise your hand and I can unmute you or you can drop it in the question and answer. All right. I'm going to unmute you. Go ahead, Mahesh. Uh, sorry, I uh, lowered my hand uh, <laughs> because you selected me and then uh, you thought I can. <laughs> Sorry. Go ahead. Hi, Kavi. Uh, this is Mahesh from UMass Medical School. Uh, great talk. Thank you so much. So my question is, uh, when you drop the fax file in the GitLab, uh, is the data like a reloading of the database or appending? Yeah. So right now it is reloading. It depends on your SQL. So you're not dropping the fact file in the GitLab. You're dropping the SQL to generate the fact file, right? And if you write the SQL to be incremental, uh, then you know it will be incremental. And but if you write it uh, right now to be not incremental, you know it, it, it takes into account uh, like you know maybe uh, everything till now, then it is going to run run that way. But the tool itself can support batches. You cannot. You don't have to. It doesn't have to be run just once. It will take into account what has been uploaded before to validate things. Okay. And um, how scalable this solution is? Yeah. So. Uh, I'll be able to give you a benchmark and we're doing the beta testing exactly on that. Uh, I can tell you that we are using it in production for, um, for 1 million facts, uh, 1 million facts and 40,000 patients. It runs perfectly fine. Takes like 12 minutes to complete. Interesting. Thank you. Uh, the the database connection time so this uses uh, you know it's what works on postgres it trust works on ms sql it uses uh, you know the ms sql tool to upload it takes the upload itself takes like 70 seconds but it is a validation and making sure that your files you know your facts are actually valid the validation is what takes time out of those 12 minutes 72 uh, seconds to to upload upload the, the file the the bcp upload so I had a question for Mike. Um, I posted it, but um, by mistake, I posted only for panelists. Uh, my question is, uh, maybe uh, our site is outlier. Um, what we we have is um, one, um, the Epic Clarity in-house and our I2B2 is on AWS. Um, so we had to write the manual ETL to generate the de-identified OMAP in the in-house and we move the files into AWS S3 and we load the data, right? So that was great that you guys are having the stored procedure ETL that will move the clarity data into OMAP uh, in the future if it does not exist now. But unfortunately, uh, again, maybe I, we are the outliers. Uh, that won't be beneficial to us, right? Um, it's actually two different uh, stored procedures. So you could run the, uh, you could write a procedure to go from Epic to OMOF. And then if that's in-house, then you're gonna have to physically move that data to AWS. And then you can run the um, like OMOF ITB2 on the AWS side. That's interesting. I would be looking forward to explore that. Yep. <clears throat> yeah, thank you, Mike. Oh, yep, no problem. Great, thank you, Kavi. Um, 